Actually, I remember back, Charlie Hoke at one point had given us an essay uh, question when we were in, when I was in the program on what is planning. And it was an essay that you had to basically describe and answer a question that's about as difficult as what's the meaning of life. But you really realize it demonstrates how planning really can work in many different contexts. The skills of simply being able to strategically plan to a communication skills, technical skills, all of them together support your activity in any kind of a context. Planning has perhaps most possibilities today than ever. Cities have become the key spaces of the world. That's where things happen. And uh, cities have been always the ones that create things. Uh, cities have always been the ones that challenge the world to be different. It's, it's a bit ironic, but when we opened our doors in the fall of 1973, there was not a single member of the faculty who had a planning degree. And that included me as dean. My background, my, my PhD is in political science. And so we had sociologists and, and uh, economics, PhDs, and uh, education. But we didn't have any planning professors as such. In many ways, the, the planning program at UIC um, sort of designed itself on the fly. You had a lot of very interesting people who wanted to be sure that the curriculum was such that one you know, could be able to you know, make good policy, understand all aspects of planning understand that there was a social aspect of planning that was extremely important and be facile with statistical analysis. Rob Meyer was tapped by Chicago's first reform mayor in a long time and first African-American mayor, a very progressive individual, uh, to be the uh, commissioner of the Department of Economic Development. And under his leadership, Rob Muir's leadership, the city engaged in probably the most important participatory type of planning and development that was neighborhood-centered. And so again, it was really great to see a lot of my professors uh, uh, help shape policy. Uh, again, Rob Muir and the things that he did both on campus and then later in the, uh, the Washington administ administration was uh, uh, was really so great. You know, you could say, hey, I, I know that person, I studied under that person. But he was representing what I think Couple was all about, you know, even though he was in the Washington administration. But what's unique about the Great Cities program was that it brought together this historical commitment to the city with the idea of Illinois Chicago having become a research university. And the urban planning program had always been along those lines because it had always conducted a great deal of research, both through the faculty uh, in the program, the Center for Urban Economic Development, that was a part of it, but there was never any doubt that the faculty and the students were deeply committed to improving the quality of life in the Chicago metropolitan area. If we improve the city of Chicago as part of the mission of the university, we aren't diminished. In fact, the university is enhanced. In fact, the place of a city and the place that's a campus of the university are interwoven, and they should pay attention to one another. So it was a way of kind of harnessing the energy and excitement of Chicago um, at a time when things were really picking up in the city and we were the sort of laboratory um, for a lot of different changes that were taking place within urban politics and urban development. It seemed like the whole of the United States was in many ways looking to see what was happening in Chicago and here was our only public institution kind of branding itself as an urban institution. When I was here in the program, it was the BSB building, the Behavioral Sciences building. And I remember that was a very confusing building to wayfind in. So that's probably one of the reasons that I am very focused on wayfinding and signage. You needed to leave a trail of breadcrumbs to be able to find your way back, you know, from the bathroom back to your office. I'm coming into the building for the first time and this guy's wheeling this cart with the monkeys in their heads and these little yokes with these wires coming out of their head. And I, that had an impact on me. It was, this is going to be an interesting experience. I never for one millisecond ever 
have grieved leaving the behavioral sciences building. I have only been back out of sheer necessity to that building because I had to be there for some other purpose. And if it were to disappear, I would never miss it. Certainly nice to move to our current uh, premises at 412 South Peoria, our Cuppa Hall. In an old uh, warehouse building that was once the form fit bra company that we have now made our home. It sort of stated that we're more kind of integrated with the city, even though we're part of the university. We're on the north side of the Eisenhower, on the north side of the Blue Line, um, and more sort of we kind of our building sort of fits in more with the urban fabric, and in some ways that's sort of what our department is all about. The Department of Urban Planning and Policy really evolved over the 40 years of its existence. It started as a a uh, social science urban program with a heavy focus on policy and a very strong orientation on, uh, on equity and social change. We haven't left those things behind, but we've grown into a very large and comprehensive planning program. I think the urban planning and policy program does a great job of attending to the needs of its students and helping them learn what's important when you try to cope with the complexity of urban places. And I think what has happened in my career here is we have gotten much better at providing them with a toolkit of concepts, methods, and practices that they can adapt to the complex institutional worlds where they end up working. I got a chance to be a planning director. Um, I got a chance to affect public policy in, in large regions of this state. Um, everything I've ever done, uh, professionally uh, and academically, I use now in my position as a state representative from, from the 38th district. One plan that I did which got a significant piece implemented in a very, very literal extension of how we had planned it the uh, Chicago Lakefront Harbor Framework Plan, which I now live walking distance from it. I think even within my own nuclear family with my wife and son, I gained more credibility. I guess I got a certain degree of respect for having come up with a plan, the front cover of which showed this harbor, which was eventually built, than probably the previous 20 years of my career. Because how cool is it that today, I take the bus routes I created. It's 2014 and I can go, I get on a bus that I created to work every day. I think that in and of itself is probably one of the coolest things I've done. I did the, worked on the entire U.S. Steel redevelopment project. We just opened the road. I rode on it for the first time yesterday, U.S. Route 41. Uh, it's great. And that site is actually getting interested developers. It's, it's really fun. The Olympic bid, where I worked as the director of Olympic Village Development, um, was probably the most challenging and probably also the most rewarding. It was designing a city within a city and all the aspects that are relevant for both undertaking and hosting a very large inter international competition as well as providing a neighborhood that would be successful ongoing into the future. We are one of the few sort of bulwarks against everything becoming commodified and marketized and um, having the private sector make decisions about everything that urban planning implies that there should be some public interest, some community good to the kinds of decisions that are being made. We were sort of starry-eyed change agents. We wanted to change the world. And in many ways, we did. I knew so much more beyond coursework when I graduated this program in 2000. Actually, one of my favorite parts of this program was the people I met. I still count them among some of my closest friends 10 years later, and I'm constantly inspired by the work that they do. Go help those that you can help, because to me, that's what planning is about. Make some changes where other, everybody can benefit from it. It's not just about getting the dollars. You know, there, there are a lot of people that need homes and things of that nature. And just do your best work and uh, enjoy life. I consider the opportunity to come to the Public Research University, which in many ways is a truly American invention, and do it in a city that is, according to Randy Apple of the New York Times, America's city, Chicago, um, 
and to do it in a way that engages with the cities of the world uh, means that in a very real sense that urban planning has, should, and always be a part, part and parcel of the University of Illinois at Chicago. It's our brand. <laughs>